All right, we're going to do a uh, short video on uh, the proof of the integral test. And how this goes is if f is positive, um, oh, we need to say it's continuous also. Continuous so that we can integrate. If f is positive, continuous, and decreasing for x greater than or equal to 1, and for all n, a n is equal to the function at, at the integers, f n, then the um, improper integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx and the sum from 1 to infinity of this uh, series a n uh, both converge or diverge and uh, so what we'll do is we will draw a picture so there's our function f decreasing and what we're going to do is we're going to partition this interval into unit length, so everything's going to have length 1. And then we're going to look at a, the upper and the lower sums in terms of, of um, the series. So if we start at k is 1 to n minus 1 of f of k, that's going to be f of 1 plus f of 2 plus all the way to f of n minus 1. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us the, uh, and then we'll label this one right here as n minus 1, that, that one right there, that's n minus 1. That's going to give us the uh, upper sums. So we'll draw a little arrow next to that sum of the upper sums. And because um, the lengths are unit length, you know, for like this first first rectangle here, the height is f of 1, and the width is 1, so the area of that is just f of 1. So this is the area of all of those rectangles, the upper rectangles. Then we'll do the same game, but we'll do it with the uh, lower rectangles. So we're going to use the right-hand um, sides of the partition. So we'll go from 2 to n, so f of 2 plus blah, 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 plus f of n. And that's our... Um, lower lower sums are lower rectangles and uh, so what we got going here is if we actually integrate we know it's continuous this by that that we mean the function is continuous that means we can integrate it from 1 to n and uh, it's going to be between be between the upper and the lower sum so that's what's going to happen on the next uh, page here so we have the lower sum It's going to be less than the actual area, and the actual area is going to be less than or equal to the upper sum. Okay, and um, we're going to note that S n is equal to f of one plus f of two plus blah 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 all the way to f of n. Okay, the uh, sum from the lower sum goes from 2 to n, so what we're missing is we're missing the first term, which would be f of 1. So, what we can say is the lower sum is the full sum minus that first term, because that's what it was missing. So that is going to be less than or equal to the actual area. And then the upper sum was almost the full sum, but it was missing the last term, f of n. So that's the same thing as Sn minus 1. Now this is going to give us enough to uh, prove our theorem. f of 1 is a constant, so it's not going to affect convergence or divergence. So what's going to happen here is if this integral is finite, as n goes to infinity, then this is going to be bounded. It's bounded by a fixed number, whatever that, that area is there. So it looks like we're drawing a person here, doesn't it? Uh, anyways, and Sn is an increasing function because all the terms are positive, so we have a monotonic increasing and is bounded by this integral that, that shows us that Sn converges. So that's showing that the integral converges implies the sum converges. Now, if the sum converges, if the sum converges, that means that 
Sn is going to go to some fixed number L. So if Sn is going to L, then certainly Sn minus, L, minus 1 is going to go to L also, which shows that this is going to be less than or equal to L also. And uh, that shows that the summation uh, converging implies that the integral converges. Now, uh, one thing that don't want to get hung up on is the value of the integral and the value of the summation are uh, possibly going to be different. This just shows that they, uh, they uh, are both going to converge or diverge. Similarly, um, if the summation diverges, that's going to push this integral off to infinity. So this diverges implies this diverges. Okay. If this integral diverges, then that's going to send the sum to infinity also. So that shows us that we have the divergence also. And that proves our theorem. Uh, I guess one other comment I'll make is um, so things to verify in order to use this is the function needs to be positive and continuous um, and then decreasing and um, sometimes we can show decreasing you know by saying that a n plus one is less than or equal to the previous term that's one way we can do it sometimes another way is we can look at the function and we look at the first derivative and the first derivative is going to tell us about increasing decreasing constant behavior so we're going to look for first derivative being negative on the interval minus one to infinity or um, maybe it doesn't start at minus at, at, I'm sorry not minus one uh, 1 to infinity, maybe it starts at 2 or, or 17 or whatever, it just eventually needs to be uh, decreasing. Um, again, the first few finitely many terms of a summation aren't going to determine whether it converges or diverges, it's, it's the, the, the tail or the end of it.